Welcome to part 4 of my DIY backyard makeover project. If you have missed the previous progress, check them out in the description. This time, I am going to show you how I intentionally built a deck to avoid getting a permit. Then, I will show you the proper way to install joist hangers. Of course, there are some very useful DIY tips I want to share with you. Before framing your deck, you need to understand there are two ways for deck structural support. The most commonly used method is called cantilever. For my deck, I used the other method which does not have a support beam for the joist. It is called flush beam method. Ok, let's take a look at the first method. You have the beam sitting on the post. This is how it should look like. Very simple. It is strong, it is fast and easy to install and it is cheap. All professional deck builders prefer this method. The downside is that it may not work for lower deck which is close to the ground because there is no space to put the beam. That's exactly my case. Also, you may need a permit. For this method, you only need joist hangers on the larger board attached to the house. Now, let's take a look at the second method. Deck without support beams for the joist. As you can see, the flush beam is supported by the post, but none of the joists are sitting on it. So, you do need joist hangers for both sides. So, what's good about this method? If you are building a low level deck close to the ground, you can avoid getting the permit. But of course, you have to check with your local code. The bad part is that it is not as strong as the first method. It is very time consuming and very expensive. Also, if you are using the helical piles like me, you will run into phasure board issue. I will show you how I solved the problem in the future videos. Enough technical details, let's do some work. This is the 2x8x16 larger board attached to the house. If you missed how I installed it, check out the last video. Now I have this double flush beams sitting on the helical pile saddle. I am using this Fasten Master screws. They are okay, not as good as the GRK RSS in my opinion. I love GRK RSS screws. This is the other side of the deck. Let's talk about joist hangers. This is how I position the joist. I used a temporary deck screw on top to hold the board. Make sure it is level with the ledger board. Then I installed the joist hammer. I am using strong tie structural screw number 9. One and a half inches for the face. I need six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next, I need number 9, two and a half inches. You drive this through the joist into the ledger board at 45 degrees angle. You need four of this. One, two, three, and four. There are many so-called professional deck builders don't even know how to install joist hangers properly. If you use the wrong type of screws or even the wrong size, your deck can collapse. No wonder why so many people died every year on deck failure. This is the most common mistake people make. They use shorter screws. Let's recap again. For 2x8 joist on LUS28, we need number 9, 2.5 inches structural screws. We need 4 of them. For the face, we need number 9, 1.5 inches structural screws. We need 6 of them. If you 
have done a good job. Everything should be level. Even I have done so many research before my project, I did make one big mistake. I did 16 inches on center for the joist. You will be fine if you are using composite or wooden deck, but for ASAC PVC deck, I trusted their installation guide and it was a mistake. They basically said for home use, 16 inches on center is good enough. You only need 12 inches on center for a commercial. I am telling you, this is very wrong. After I installed the deck, I regret it. It was a bit bouncy. But there is nothing I could do, so I learned the lesson and came up with a workaround for the other two decks. I will show you in the future videos how I solved the problem. Don't forget to install blocking for your deck, it is pretty straightforward. But this does not replace the 12 inch on center. Remember there were some challenges I talked about working with helical piles? This is one of them. The saddle was not perfectly straight. I had to shim it and use washers to compensate the space. Because this part of the deck is so long, I needed to join two beams together using the metal plate. Honestly, I don't know if this is the proper way to do it, but it works. Last part is to prepare for the picture frame deck board installation. This is the first method. It's pretty easy. You put some blocking at the bottom between the joist and then put a 2x4 on top. For the regular deck screws, especially near the edge, you need to pre drill. This is another method, using blockings and 2x4. This one may not be as strong, but it worked pretty good. For DIY people, I recommend studying your logo by law before you start your project. For me, they said as long as my deck is under 24 inches, which is 2 feet, I don't need a permit. For the pergola, as long as I don't have a solid roof, I am fine. So I planned my design based on the bylaw to avoid getting a permit. However, it doesn't mean that you will not be screwed. During the constructions, one of my backyard neighbors complained to the city and the building inspector came. But since I studied the bylaw and I showed him everything was legal, the complaint was closed. Next time, I will show you how to use high performance bedding to build a paving stone landing for the stairs. The goal on my channel is to inspire more people to DIY. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you think this is helpful for you. And remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.